All right, so playoff previews are officially back on the menu. Love these videos. I made a similar style about the Chargers Raiders game and predicted a Raiders win in overtime. So let's see if I can continue my hot streak here. Uh, going, you know, staying with the Raiders, talking about how they're going to play against the Bengals. And what I'm going to do in this video is talk about the Bengals offense and how I think it matches up against the Raiders defense, what we can learn and maybe uh, how these things, just the matchups in general and the way teams will try to attack each other. So one interesting thing is I remembered that the Bengals blew out the Raiders, but I, I looked at the box score and it was, you know, actually a lot closer than I thought. So here's the full box score. Sorry, if, sorry if it's a little small, uh, but hopefully you guys can read it and everything. Uh, but basically, the the surprise is so the Bengals had a slight edge in terms of total yards, 288 total yards to 278, so just 10 yards. But the yards per play is way down for Cincinnati, 4.1 yards per play for Cincinnati, 5.9 for Las Vegas. That's a huge jump right there. So the fact that the Raiders ended up being the ones who got crushed despite having a lot more yards per play is fascinating. Now, again, part of it is, you know, the Bengals won 32 to 13. The Raiders were down in the fourth quarter, had to throw more to try and come back. At least you would assume, but that's not entirely the case. I mean, the Raiders only th actually threw the ball two times less, but also had, you know, relatively less snaps. So uh, that's surprising, I think, and kind of makes you say, okay, maybe this game isn't as lopsided as you might think. Now, the third down efficiency also jumps out at you. The Raiders just one for seven. We can talk more about that in the other video where I talk about the Raiders offense against the Bengals defense, but just found that interesting. Kind of makes you think, hey, this might not be as big of a, a blowout as you might be expecting heading into this game. It's actually, uh, going back and watching the tape, it seems a lot closer than you might realize. Let's look at Joe Burrow's numbers, and let's look at the Bengals' numbers for a second here. Burrow just narrowly cleared uh, five yards per attempt game here, 20 for 29, only 149 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. The rushing totals, they got a lot of yards, but didn't exactly move the ball with incredible efficiency, right? I mean, uh, Joe Mixon had 30 carries for 123 yards, but on just 4.1 yards per carry, two touchdowns. So that's that's solid. It's not bad. It's kind of fine. It's, it's you know, four yards per carry. Uh, you'd like to probably be a little bit above that. They were a little bit above that, maybe not above it enough. Also for receiving, I've cut it off. I'm not showing everybody, but just let, you know, pointing this out that no one really went off. Like Jamar Chase, who has had some great games, did have a touchdown in this one, had the one passing touchdown in this one, but, you know, three for 32 yards. Tyler Boyd had 49 yards, but not crazy, not a crazy efficient passing day. And the running game wasn't even that spectacular either. So this uh, chart really is, I think, something that's going to give Raiders fans a lot of optimism heading into this game is that for the Raiders, uh, for Joe Burrow, you look at when he is blitzed. I mean, he's been incredible when he's blitzed versus not blitzed, but the passer rating has a big drop off because when he's blitzed, it's he has a passer rating of 122.1. When he's not blitzed, it's just 104.0. Now, where it ranks in terms of the NFL, uh, it's third one blitzed and second one not blitzed. But the reality is, guys who are great against the blitz, that has just, just a bigger jump than guys who are great when they're not blitzed. So the reality is, basically what I'm saying is, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I don't blitz the Bengals that often. Because you see that 18-point passer rating jump, I don't want to blitz them that often. The Raiders blitz only 11.4% of the time. That's last in the NFL. So... That's matchup advantage to Las Vegas here, which again, I know that the Bengals blew out the Raiders earlier, but you start looking at these numbers and you start thinking, hey, the, the, you know, the Bengals might have more of a tough time than maybe we realize. Now let's go over here. This is the, uh, these are the PFF grades the first time these two teams played each other. So uh, the reason why I like to do this is you kind of can actually get a pretty good sense of how, you know, how the game was played and who did well and who did poorly. So, you know, you look at the, the top of the list among guys who played significant playing time. Max Crosby, of course, he's always at the top of the list, it seems like, with these charts. Uh, Nate Hobbs, Casey Hayward, so a couple of corners uh, coming in there. You know, a couple of guys in coverage uh, doing well at the top there. And you even have a Carl Nassib, a Cleland Furl uh, towards the middle. You look all the way to the bottom, so Brandon Faiskin, uh, who is fascinating. I think I've liked a decent amount of what I've seen from him this season. They had him as a really poor grade, and that's that's worth noting because the Raiders have several corners who can play, specifically, uh, you know, Casey Hayward and Nate Hobbs. However, 
you do need three corners to cover against Cincinnati, and we'll get into that in a second. Going over to the Cincinnati Bengals now, again, interesting. So first off, Jonah Williams did very well. Uh, and we've seen this happen a couple of times now with the Raiders. In both of these previews, we've seen uh, you know Max Crosby be at the top and also one tackle be at the top. So for Max Crosby, you put him on the right tackle, you can continue to get some pressure if that's what you want to do. Um, also worth noting, Tyler Boyd and Jamar Chase graded very well. So we got some good corner play, but also you might be wondering, well, why did those guys, neither one of them really went off, even though they graded so well? Is PFF wrong? Is the statistics wrong? What's going on? You also look at the bottom of the list. So T Higgins did not grade particularly, uh, well in this one. And also Joe Burrow did not grade particularly well in this one. In fact, that was actually the lowest PFF grade he had of this season was against the Raiders, despite the fact that they blew out the Raiders. So what happened? All of this, you know, I think is very fascinating and can really help lay the groundwork for what we then see on film, because of course, numbers mean nothing if you don't have film to back it up. Let's get into the film. And the first thing I want to talk about is going to be Jamar Chase. So right off the bat, I want to show a play like this, because... Okay, so what happened? If Jamar Chase's PFF grade was good, but he didn't get many catches, why does that, you know, what typically is the reason for that? I think more often than not, when I see something like that, it's almost always, uh, almost exclusively, in fact, they're getting open, but just not getting the ball. And that's actually a big thing that we're going to talk about in a big thread here is the reason why the Bengals offense has been so good these past couple of weeks is they've kind of opened it up a little bit and been willing to just throw down field constantly. They weren't doing that as much against the Raiders. I mean, on this play, Chase is going to get open. He's actually not the only guy who gets open on this play. Uh, but, you know, uh, Burrow really just didn't have time to get it there, ends up actually fumbling the football. So, uh, you know, that's worth noting, right? To me, that's notable. I think something like this is kind of a great example of what we can uh, look at and what we can say, okay, they didn't hit on these in the first game. They might hit on these in the second game. Like, I don't think it's fair to say, well, they shut down uh, Chase the first time, so it'll probably shut him down again. I don't know. Because, like, on this play, listen, you are going to get some one-on-one -on -one matchups with Jamar Chase. It's going to happen. And this is, you know, Brandon Faiskin, who... Uh, I, I gotta be honest, I don't love this matchup by Las Vegas. I think that, like, you know, Casey Hayward or even Nate Hobbs should be on Jamar Chase at all times if you're ever giving him a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Never give him a one-on-one -on -one matchup in this scenario. Look, Chase is gonna get off the line cleanly. He's gonna get a little open, and Burrow, you know, makes a good throw. They're just not able to finish and make that play. It was good defense, so I'm not, like, mad at it or anything, but it does kind of make you realize a little bit, okay, uh, I think it's probably fair to say in a situation like this, if they do it enough times, they'll hit on one or two of them, but at least you can slow them down, the Las Vegas Raiders can. Now, let's talk schematics for a second here, because it's not just like, okay, there were some opportunities that they had and missed. Like, what the Raiders do a lot of is play this cover three zone, which in some ways means you have a one-on-one -on -one matchup, right? Chase is on the, the sideline, you know, running towards the side running uh, closest to the sideline, excuse me, on the top of the screen, running a go route. And so you have just one corner who's covering him. It's not like there's really safety help exactly. There kind of is a little bit, but there's only a single safety deep is really what I mean. So uh, for Casey Hayward, who's covering Jamar Chase on this play, what you can do, though, when you're playing zone coverage, when you're playing cover three, is you know that over the middle, there's linebackers who will take something away. So if Chase does cut over the middle, you have some help there. So right when this play begins, you see how Hayward is, uh, you know, bailing out right here, which makes it just much more difficult for Jamar Chase to be able to get past him. And that's schematically why you won't see as many, uh, you know, listen, you're not going to see Jamar Chase get like the 260 yards that he had against the Kansas City Chiefs. Just schematically, that's not going to work. Although the flip side, I would say part of how you had that game was Burrow just kind of threw it up to Chase and he was able to make stuff happen. One of my criticisms of Zach Taylor is he's played, uh, you know, he's coached some things kind of too close to the book, if that makes sense. For example, if there's a you know formation that's good to run the ball in, sometimes you still don't want to run the ball if like the personnel makes it something else. Uh, but he doesn't really do that. He typically just does, you know, uh, what you are quote unquote supposed to do against certain coverages, regardless of who his personnel is, which I'm not a huge fan of. Again, uh, he's done a lot of stuff well as well, but that's something that I, uh, you know, that's a concern I have is will they do the right thing and open up the playbook here? 
even something like this I find very interesting where what's going to happen on this play is it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup and there is safety help over the top however the safety is going to end up covering over the middle so because of this it's actually going to be a situation where you can gain some yards and this can work because watch how when Burrow takes a snap look at how open Chase is going to get I mean they had basically a touchdown and Burrow just missed the throw so that's kind of my point is listen you hit on one or two of those that could be the difference in the football game so for the Raiders they have to find a way to you know shut it down as much as possible they did a good job with that the first time these two teams played uh will they be able to do as good of a job the next time, uh, I don't know, probably not. I would assume that Chase will get, you know, one or two of these. And even if it's not Chase, even if you ha put Tyler Boyd out there and have him go up because you want to get, you know, an easier matchup against, you know, whatever corner is covering these guys, you could do something like that. But again, it'll probably be more difficult than it was against like, you know, the, the Ravens, for example. One thing I want to talk about as well is something like this, where what's going to happen on this play, watch both of these edge rushers. Um, again, like I said, Jonah Williams, the left tackle for Cincinnati, actually played pretty well in this one. But still, you put Max Crosby on the right tackle, not going to always work as well. And as you see, both Crosby and Unique Ngakwe on this play are going to be able to generate some pressure. And Ngakwe got the sack, but I really felt like it was actually Crosby who set things up on that play. So, uh, you know, good job by both those guys. And, and Burrow, who does like to get outside the pocket, that could create some issues, that could create some sacks. And if you can get those sacks, that's how you can kill some drives. So that's a very interesting, that's in the Raiders' advantage, in my opinion. So, okay, now let's go over to something like this. Because if we're talking about how the scheme uh, is, you know, all advantage Raiders, well, how did the uh, Bengals score so many points then? And part of it was they had some, uh, you know, a shorter field position later on in the game and we'll get into that more in a second but also you can still move the ball effectively and part of why they had more yards than the Raiders with a lot less yards per attempt is because they had more of a methodical approach something like this it's zone coverage but you can run a little rub route that can allow for someone to get open watch as you see this play does work out and this was also a third down and short they pick up the first down so this is how you can gain some yards and methodically move down the field this is also why the Bengals ran the ball so much in this game they ran the ball more than they threw the ball uh so stuff like that you know you can move the ball down the field although I've always always kind of said I don't love that as a strategy. I, I like getting the chunk plays. That's why I want to still see some Jamar Chase plays down the field. But if Zach Taylor decides to just do this stuff, like it can work. Here's another one where what's going to happen on a play like this is it's going to be, a, again, a zone coverage play. And you see how Chase's route can get into a gap in coverage. Watch. Burrow takes a snap, runs a play action. The play works. You hit Jamar Chase and pick up a first down on that play. So this stuff can work. Like, I'm not saying it can't. And this is actually what Zach Taylor is at his best at, is scheming this kind of stuff up. He does a really good job of that, in my opinion. The issue is less so about, like, can this work, but how consistently will it work? And you kind of just assume, okay, eventually a drive is going to stall, right? Eventually, Max Crosby is going to make a great play, get a sack, and the drive is going to stall. And, like, stuff like this can happen, where you keep trying to run these plays, it's zone coverage, you have kind of a route to, again, get into a gap in coverage right here, and watch what happens. Look, Burrow takes a snap right here, and there's an opening, but maybe not a huge opening. And this is kind of the issue with having to, you know, run 12 plays to get a touchdown, is that it's just more difficult. It's just some things can go wrong. Burrow makes this throw, but it does get knocked away. Could have maybe even been intercepted. And that's the concern if you're a Cincinnati Bengals fan is the, the stuff like that. So that's kind of my, my logic on this. Also, I didn't spend a ton of time uh, with the, I, you know, ended up not even showing a running play, but just to speak on the running game, uh, I didn't think it was that great by Cincinnati, but they broke off a couple of big runs kind of later in the game. So they weren't really able to run the ball too consistently, but that's also part of why their yards per play was uh, so far down while they still were able to put up points is because it was kind of a strategic thing more so than they weren't playing well. So, all right, final thing to talk about. This is the predictions for uh, this, you know, this side of the game. Uh, so top thing you look at is PPD means points per drive. That's what that stands for. So they had 3.2 points per drive in the first game, which that's like ridiculously high. Like that would be the best in football. That's a really high points per drive. But a couple things worth noting. So only 2.75 points per drive in the first eight possessions and 2.1 points per drive in the first seven possessions. 
The reason why I kind of cut both of those two things off is because you could make the argument that part of why they had so much points per drive was they had, you know, the last two drives Cincinnati did, they were both set up in Las Vegas territory already. In fact, in field goal range already, uh, one was a 27 yard touchdown drive and the other, they didn't, didn't even get a first down, but still got three points for, uh, and then, you know, they had a touchdown drive right before that. So uh, in the first three quarters, 2.1 points per drive is actually, you know, that's, that's good, as in good for the Raiders. You look uh, sort of down, Cincinnati averages uh, 2.47 points per drive on the year, and Las Vegas gives up 2.36 points per drive on the year. And I have my prediction, I'm going with 2.4 points per drive, and I'll say it'll be about a 10 possession game, because I think both teams will run the ball, or at least the, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals will probably run the ball a decent amount and run some over the middle stuff a decent amount, which gives them 24 total points, which is less than last time. But again, things change, and you can learn a lot from watching these two teams play the first time these two teams played. But you can also, of course, use new information that you have at your disposal. And I would say that, like, I, I see them taking more shots to Jamar Chase now than they did then. I think they'll hit on some of those. Although I actually think that, for the most part, uh, when the Bengals do try to just have these long methodical drives, I think that they, their points per drive would probably end up being lower than it is typically on the year. So that's why I'm going to go with the 2.4, which, is, you, know, you know, that feels about right to me, uh, that's, which is still a pretty good uh, score, 2.4 points per drive. So that's what I think. Is that going to be enough to win the 24 points? Well, you'll have to tune in to my next video, which will probably be tomorrow, where I break down the other half of the ball, and then I'll talk about who I have winning this football game. But it's interesting stuff. Uh, I really do think that there's a lot of fascinating stuff here. So what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.